Whose idea was that? I can't see anything. Man, this camera has the smallest screen in the world. Hey, Steven is here. Today I'm going to show you the camera that changed the way I make videos. This is the Zcam F6, a cinema camera that's a bit like a Swiss Army knife in the world of film. Just like a Swiss Army knife, the Zcam F6 is a versatile, functional and can be used for a variety of purposes like YouTube videos or giving it to Tom Cruise for his crazy stunts. I've been using this camera for a thousand days and let me tell you, it's been a wild ride. I've filmed commercial projects, cinematic videos and even won an award with this camera with a price of $10,000 and received a really good feedback. But there's one little thing about this camera that's been driving me insane and I cannot wait to share it with you all. So let's start. I remember the day I got my hands on the Zcam. I found out about the brand in, I think, 2019 while living in the city where almost every camera related brand is made. Shenzhen. So while going crazy roofing and making commercial videos, my friend Walter got in touch with Zcam and took one camera for a test. This is the cage. It's made out of uh, two rubber bands. What is this uh, setup called? What do you call it? Hobo cinematic setup, bro. <laughs> Fast forward, we took it roofing, filmed on the islands in the Philippines. And then I decided to buy my own full frame Zcam F6 because before we tried just Micro Four Thirds and I wanted that full frame look. The best thing about this camera for me is the video quality, of course. The dynamic range, oh my God, it's so good. And I just like the way the footage comes out of this camera. It doesn't require any editing or color grading basics. So if you film with the Sony cameras, you know how sometimes colors are a little bit messed up. You need to spend some time in order to get the footage done. But with this camera, you just drag and drop their plugin and it looks so good and it's very time efficient for me. And this is very important because when you edit a lot of videos for clients, you need that quick turnaround. You just edit, color grade, give it to a client, edit, color grade, give it to a client. You don't have that luxury of time. But this camera is just weight off my shoulders. You can film slow motion in 6K or use this resolution for interviews and then just crop in and use it as a close-up angle. Though, whenever I want to save space, I just film in regular 1080 and the camera can go forever without overheating. It's perfect for podcast interviews or you know, videos like this. There's no internal heating, so it does get hot, but it never turns off, it just keeps working. I film side to side with the Sony FX6 cinema camera, and even though Sony claims to have more dynamic range, for some reason, the Zcam image always felt more volumetric, more filmic to me, and I always preferred it as a main camera over FX6 whenever I'm taking these two cameras with me. So you might be thinking, with all these amazing features, there must be some downsides, right? Well, you're not wrong. It's this this tiny screen. This funny little monitor makes it impossible to use the camera without an external one. Or is it? Worry not, there is a solution. And it's a glorious mobile app that should become a gold standard for all camera manufacturers. You know how Sony cameras are notorious for a bad app? I mean, it's so laggy. I flip the screen, it loses the connection, and then it drains the battery super fast. Don't agree with me? Let's see how much battery will be left by the end of this video in this Sony 7 Mark IV because of the running app, and you're gonna be shocked. So the way the uh, Zcam app works, it's crazy. You see this antenna? You you just can take any Wi-Fi router and use its antennas for transmitting the image. Why is there Wi-Fi down? Now, as per this mathematically accurate chart, Sony app is rated somewhere here and Zcam is here. Science. Anyways, here I can control all the important settings, assist tools, and also if I'm filming a commercial or an interview, I can connect clients' phones so they can preview the image as well. I do it all the time whenever we work on set design in the frame, so the people on set can just see how the image is gonna look like in real time and adjust the props if needed. And keep in mind, it's not some 2023 technology. I used this app in 2019. So tell me, is there anyone else beside me wishing Sony had this kind of app for their cameras? Because I don't think it's that difficult, right? I mean, they introduced electric cars, drones, but can't fix their camera app for some reason. Another feature that stands out to me is dual base ISO. 
It means that I can film during the day with ISO 500 and in low light I can just set it up to 2500 ISO and the footage comes out crystal clear, which makes low light performance on this camera really exceptional. Even if you're filming in log and in low light, the footage is still so clean. You have to properly expose in some way Z-Log on that camera as well, but it's no comparison to Sony cameras. It's just so clear. Trust me, whenever I'm filming in log and I'm just thinking, oh my God, maybe I should not use log in this case. Maybe it's better to go with Rec. 709 or something else. Well, I just can trust the Z-Log for some reason, even at night. It does not have as much noise as other cameras. Even praised by everyone, FX6 somehow comes noisier than this one. There's also built-in D-filters, but unlike those marvelous built-in D-filters on Sony FX6, here is just a separate module that you insert between the sensor and the lens and I haven't tried it, so I don't really know if it's good or not. Um, yeah, just let's leave it there. Also, what's cool in this cinema camera is that it has swappable mounts. You just take off the Canon mount and you put on the PL mount. Or if you want to use Sony lenses, there's also third-party adapter, which allows you to use Sony lenses as well. Though they suck a little bit for manual focusing. And yeah, I'll talk about autofocus in just a little bit because and I also do like the way the camera looks. Whenever you go on set and when you're filming in the studio or outdoors working with the actors, whenever they see you working with the camera, even though Sony 7 Mark IV, 7 S3 record really good videos, but they don't make as good of an impression on people as this camera. It just looks more professional on set. People love the way it looks. And I use this camera all the time whenever I need a props camera in the frame. Uh, yeah, you can see it just looks cool in the frame. It looks more professional, more cinematic filmmakery, I guess. But personally, I don't care that much about the looks. Uh, it's just people's opinion, you know? What can I do? Also, this camera has crazy battery life. When you're not filming, it's just on, but in standby mode, it can go forever with this NPF batteries. And it's really power efficient. However, despite all of these positive things, this year, I'm gonna sell this camera. And this brings us to the cons section. This camera has no autofocus. Well, technically, there is an option to click on this object on the screen through the app, but it's only good for product videos or interviews like this when the subject isn't moving much. But then again, that's pretty common for most of the cinema cameras. They don't have autofocus, right? Another thing, if you want to film in-camera raw, then this camera might not be the right fit for you. And you're better off with something like red. But full-frame red at the same time will cost you five or 10x times more. And although these things don't really bug me, there are reasons I'm going to sell it anyways. For the past four years, I've been heavily into filming commercials and lounge videos. But this year, I want to focus more on YouTube. And this is an ideal camera for traveling and filming on the go, like some of the drone missions on my channel I make. Additionally, if I ask someone to film me, the person doing it will face a couple of problems. Not only they have to know how to manually focus on the lens, but the main problem is just this camera a bit too heavy to hold for a long period of time. So I would say if you're filming at home like this, this camera is good enough for you. But once you go outdoors and have someone filming you, it becomes a problem and I just will be looking to invest my money into something more versatile at this point and better fitting for my YouTube needs. In conclusion, I still personally think that Zcam F6 is a fantastic camera that's perfect for any filmmaker. Its image quality, app, compact design, 6K recording make it a great product. So. If you're in the market for a unique camera, give it a go. And meanwhile, make sure to subscribe and watch my next video right here. Um, yeah, I'll see you there. Bye-bye. It was just connected to my phone and yeah. The battery is completely exhausted. It's not even showing me the message that it's no battery there.